an earlier version of the show, and I think it's useful to talk through the different iterations that came through on the puzzles. In an earlier version of the show, at that point when the players clapped twice, the lights would go down, black lights would come up, and they would illuminate the two posters in the room, and the those posters had uh, an arrow pointing on it toward that uh, potted plant which has a false bottom. And the, one of the uh, meta puzzle pieces was hidden in the, in the bottom of that. Through running the show, we discovered that it was actually a little bit too easy and players were finding that hiding spot too soon. And so we changed it. And now in the final version of the show, when players clap twice, we don't have black lights, and instead uh, this spotlight comes on right onto, onto this table, and if players look carefully underneath it, they can find uh, this bit, uh, which is the uh, second of three uh, meta puzzle pieces. So Faye, can we have the lights back up? So I'll just talk through uh, the other puzzle. So that, that puzzle can be happening in parallel with other things that players are doing in the room. And it was obviously important to have multiple puzzles going on at once. So another puzzle that I'll explain now uh, that players certainly noticed was this, uh, this cabinet is locked. Players noticed that it has leaves on it and on each of these locks, there are four locks. This one says maple, this says poison ivy, this says redwood, and this says oak. And on the two posters, there's a poster here with a nice display of various leaves, and by the leaves there are numbers. And the second, the, the second thing you need to solve this puzzle is that there's a poster over here that says tree leaves and descriptions of those uh, leaves. And then finally, we have this sort of candelabra that's hung with keys, and the keys have, um, have numbers on it. So for instance, this one, it's hanging, it has the number uh, 017 on it. And so by matching the, the lock, so maple, plus the description of what a maple leaf looks like, plus that poster with a picture of a maple leaf, you get the code um, for, this, for this key. And so with these, I should be able to unlock this uh, cabinet. And typically when players were solving this, they would have one player, maybe one player over here, and then another player over at the posters. Um, and there were enough different uh, key combinations that typically players did not try and brute force it. It is possible to brute force this puzzle by trying all of the keys and all of the locks, but it was typically uh, faster if players tried to just actually use logic, which is always nice. So they get these four unlocked, and then at that point, they're able to open up the, the cabinet, and inside, they find this globe, and the globe has various push pins on it, and they have on one side the city name, where the push pin is, and on the other side, a date, a month, a month and a date. And the solution to this puzzle requires the following things. First, the players need to notice that there are pictures of the team that are sort of newspaper clippings and they have a date in the top right and it also has the members of the team. So that's one thing they need. They need the globe and then they also need, hidden in this couch is a Polaroid and it has a picture of the cabinet and the, and the photos there. And in the back, it gives a reminder about how to get into, how to unlock this. And it has a, an anniversary reminder of when, uh, you know, of when the team got together. And so with that information, cross-referencing when in the sequence of events the team, uh, the team was together, the players are able to identify it by looking at the various flags that actually um, it's Salem. This particular flag is missing, but the answer is Salem. And with that, they can go uh, over to this lock and unlock it with, uh, with Salem. The other thing is that players typically uh, notice that, hey, this is gonna be a five-letter uh, five answer, and they, they are able to put it together that way as well. We have a lot of players uh, trying Perth. We get a lot of Perth attempts when they're just trying to brute force it. 
and I'm having a little trouble with this lock, but it's not actually that hard. So there we go. And that last one, I don't know if it showed on the video. This last one was blank, but uh, it, it had an M on it, written on, on it during the show. And then they get into the final room, the control room. 